Golf Pass, Martin Chuck here, and welcome to the Raven Golf Club, Phoenix, Arizona. Today's session is all about leveling up with your bunker play. Just at a bunker shot there, not too shabby, and may make that putt, save my par, and move on. I wanna to talk to you about leveling up. What are you gonna do when you're just kinda of breaking 100, then breaking 90, and then eventually trying to break 80, leveling up your skills in a bunker? I wanna to talk to you about the things that I see when I do my golf schools, some of the taboo moves and then the moves that lend themselves to hitting reliable bunker shots. So for those of you trying to break 100, let's talk about some basic things about setup that are really gonna help you. And then how the wedge works. And you can see I've got a little piece of sport court right here and it gives a nice solid sound and response when the club touches it. I'm gonna put a little sand on that and oftentimes when people are getting in the bunkers for the first time, I'll take this piece of sport court, I'll put a ball right on that. And there's a reason for it because I want them to be okay with this sense of, I call it thwap, T-H-W-A-C-K, this sense of thwap, the bottom of the golf club, hitting this sport court. And the response that the sand and the ground puts in that sense of how that reaction, that bounce, the way the club reacts with the sand and the firmness underneath that layer of sand and then how the ball responds. So there's a couple things I talk about in my golf school that are really, really critical. Things you need to be decent in bunkers. You need a bit of speed. That's something that, believe it or not, some people have a bit of a challenge with. You certainly need to learn how to apply loft and then you need touch point control. So let's go through those three things in this level up segment to help you. I've got my 60 degree golf club here. You can do this with a 56, but I would use something with loft and then something that has a bit of bounce on it. There's a lot of sand wedges with extreme bounce. They're really limited to fluffy sand. I'm here in the morning here on this kind of isolated bunker hitting a couple shots and I've got wet sand, wet firm sand. A lot of people complain about that. I actually like firm wet bunkers. To me, it's a lot easier. You get response back when you commit the club into that condition. The ball, the club kicks back, you know what to respond to. Those really thick, fluffy bunkers, I'm not a fan of those. Why? Because they're bottomless. The club can go into the sand and it seems like it's bottomless. You really have to be a good, what I call salami slicer when you're in one of those fluffy bunkers because you have to commit to a level and go through it. But for those of you trying to break 100, just leveling up, let's go through three pieces you need. You need to have some loft. If I put a golf ball back in front of me, let's take a look at what will take away loft. This kind of look, I see this all the time. People have the handle forward, they've taken a club that's got 60 degrees of loft, they put the handle forward, and now they have very little loft. And if you'll notice, this lip right here is at least four feet high, maybe almost four feet. That's easily something a ball can go over if you use a 56 degree club or a 60 degree club properly. When I have the ball forward in my stance and my hands are mid-body, that adds some loft to the club, which we want. And you can see how easily that loft would project a ball up over something four or five feet. I know that's intimidating, but it's intimidating and you're gonna do something that's gonna to try to help this ball get out of the bunker and that's the problem. So, breaking 100. We're gonna make sure that the ball's forward within our fairly wide stance. That's a big one. We're gonna have some loft on the face. People say, well, Martin, is that opening the face? I go, no, it's not opening the face. When the ball's forward in my stance, the natural place for the loft to be would be to the left. So I'm just gonna get the loft square to my target. From the down the line camera, you can see that that's pointing at my target. So is the face really open or is the loft just aiming appropriately? I, th I think it's aiming appropriately. So we need loft, speed, and touch point control. Let's talk about touch point control. For breaking 100, and this is gonna apply to you breaking 80 and breaking 90 as well, I've got my teeter-totter board here. And why is this board in place? Because, let me explain. When I go to hit a shot, let's get that settled in here so this isn't a blooper reel and I fall down. But look where my weight goes. My weight is in my lead foot. I'm gonna take this teeter-totter, I'm gonna click it to my lead foot. I'm going to leave it there because if I can leave it there, let's see how I do here, hitting a little shot. A little miss hit, but the ball came out, not too bad. But the point is you didn't see 
me rock backwards to try to do something that we see constantly at the golf school is this behavior, trying to help the ball out. You can see if I rock back, what's that do to my low point? It messes up my control on where I'm going to put the club into the sand. So to illustrate that and to make that something that you're going to do and really pay attention to, we say at the golf school, let's get our weight settled into our strong lead leg. Go ahead and give that a little tap. Get your weight in that strong lead leg. So now you're starting to do a couple of three things. You've got your loft, you got the club forward. Notice where ball location is. It's up off my lead foot. We've got our weight into our strong lead leg, okay? And then we need a bit of speed. So, well, Martin, you didn't tell us where to hit the sand. Okay, well, that's a great question. We're gonna try to feel as though we are removing a dollar bill size of sand with a golf ball being the president right there. There's Washington right there. We're gonna remove this dollar bill size bit of sand. There's my ball forward in my stance. There's my weight into my strong lead leg. I've got my loft, add a little bit of speed. We'll see how we do. Ball comes out quite nicely and not a bad shot. So for those of you breaking 100, the key things, let's not tip back to help it out. A good feeling, weight into the strong lead leg. What I want you to do for those of you learning how to break 100, put yourself into your strong lead leg, hit the sand with your trail hand only, and see if you can get some of it to pop up into your hand. Because if you can do that, you're not backing out, letting the sand escape. I want you to feel like you can lean into your strong lead leg, hit the sand, and go ahead and get some to land into your hand. That's a big, big deal to help you understand how to displace sand, which gets the golf ball to get up and out of the bunker. So, breaking 90, how are you gonna do that? When you're breaking 90, instead of just getting out, now you're starting to try to get the ball in a closer proximity to the hole. That's when we have to invite some rhythm, we have to invite the idea of when we move the sand, how are we gonna displace it the right amount so the ball gets closer to the cup? And I had an experience at the, what we used to be called the Bob Hope Classic back in the day in the in Palm Desert area. I got to watch Freddie Couples up close hit bunker shots. And here was the cool thing. Whether he had a longer bunker shot or a close bunker shot, he developed plenty of back swing length. And let me explain. So Fred, Freddie, set up into a bunker shot and whether it was a short one like the one I have here, well, this is, you know, 20 footer. He had plenty of backswing speed where he could let the club get into the sand and whether he accelerated through it or he let the energy come off of it, that's how he controlled his distance. And some of you think, well, Martin, I thought you were supposed to accelerate through anything. You're, you're really supposed to accelerate through the golf ball. Well, all too often, I see this with the students. They stay down and they don't take a big enough backswing and then everything is about how much they accelerate. Really nice bunker players have a blend of developing backswing and letting the club almost cruise into the sand, decelerating it properly. I'm not saying quit in the sand, but I'm saying don't be one of these folks who stays down and does this excessive follow through because the best players, let me give myself a decent lie here, the best players have the ability to have enough backswing length. Let's see if I can get one really close and try to hold one for you here. Oh, not gonna go in, but not too bad. They have the ability to make sure they develop enough backswing and then to monitor how much energy the club hits the sand, therefore displacing the sand. For your breaking 90, what I want you to do is just take your wedge, your lob wedge or sand wedge, stick it in the sand and drag this club through here and see how the club, uh, how the sand works up and goes over the wedge. Because what's happening there is you're learning how this sand is gonna work backwards up the face and propel the ball up and out. Sometimes I'll give the visual of a free throw shooter and how they'll stand there and a really good free throw shooter will have the ball spinning backwards off of their face. So that sense of the ball going back up with some backspin. Now when you do that really slowly, the club's working back and up and over the face. When you add a swing, naturally that happens so fast you can't 
see that, but you have to understand that's what the sand is doing. We're touching the sand about two inches, three inches behind the golf ball. We're touching it not so steep. It's a fairly shallow strike. And we're trying to keep loft on the face. So here's what I mean by that. When you're working on your proximity, let's take a look at bunker shots. When you get settled into the shots breaking 90, we don't want to go back and take the loft off. We want to feel like we can keep loft on the face. The face is pointed at me. The yellow ball is pointed at me. It's not pointed down. And as we strike the sand, the loft's obviously very available to let the sand roll back up over the face, the ball to get pitched upward. And then the through swing, the loft is pointing at me. So that's a critical thing for you to become a more effective bunker player breaking 90. Now, for those of you trying to break 80, let's talk a little bit more about technique. In bunker play, guess what? There's no substitute, you guys and gals, to get in here and spend some time. I guarantee you, if you said, Gary, player, Mr. Player, how many hours have you spent in a bunker? He'd probably look you straight in the eye and say, oh, 5,000. Well, 5,000 hours of bunker practice, I know that sounds crazy, it's two years worth of work. But over his lifetime, he enjoyed bunker play. He could sink shots at will almost. It's fantastic. I've seen him hold three bunker shots to start off a bunker demonstration. And I've only seen him give five bunker demonstrations. So three of the five, he's canned the first shot he's hit. That's how good he is at this. So there's no substitute to getting in here and feeling bunkers. And when I say feeling, walk in, get a sense of what's underfoot. This little move that I do isn't so much to stabilize my feet as it is for me to have an understanding of the texture and the density of the sand. So for those of you getting better, you know, understanding bunker shots, look at the setup things we're talking about. And this as an alignment aid, but also take notice that when I settle into these, my angles are fairly level to the sand. My weight's into my strong lead thigh. I'm not tipped backwards trying to help it out because that's gonna change my low point control. So be very mindful of that. Get yourself very level into your strong lead thigh. And for those of you trying to break 80, okay, you need a little bit more dexterity and trust in club face control, learning how to keep some loft on the face. So the feels for you breaking 80. When you go back, stop, look at the face, make sure you see it. Just like when I had the magnet pointer on there. As you come through impact, we have a still lofted lead wrist. I haven't let the lead wrist strengthen as it might hitting a full shot out of the fairway. And then through impact, we're keeping that angle, keeping that angle, and then the finish, keeping that angle. So let's see if I can do Gary Player proud here. Give myself a decent lie to have half a chance. All right, so keeping some loft on that lead wrist, aiming my, getting my weight into my lead side, nice level shoulders. See how I do here. A little long, but anyway, not too bad. So golf pass, think about that. The three things you need, some of the basics and setup, touch point control, some of the boo-boos to avoid. And as you start to develop your bunker game, you'll feel like being in a bunker is no big deal for you. You'll be able to get it out, get it close, maybe even convert some pars. So Martin Chuck signing off for golf pass.